everyone. This is PHTV Channel 4 in Palos Heights. I'm Sue Jankowski and we are at the library. And we have our friends Janine and Tina here today with us. And uh, this is great that we have the opportunity to talk again about what's coming up this month because so many things are. And, uh, you know, we're on the cusp of summer, I like to think, even though we've had you know, some weather issues this year, that means we're going to have a spectacular summer, I feel like, you know, we paid our, we paid our dues. Um, so we're going to start with uh, Janine, as we always do with uh, what's going on in the uh, public work, uh, public department. And uh, Janine, help us uh, guide us through what's happening. Well, uh, we're, you know, we're looking at a slide right now. I hope we can see it all right. Um, oops, let me go back. Summer reading is coming. Um, just so just, uh, yes, it's coming. It's, summer is coming, folks. I know we just had snow last week and all this other thing, but um, we are getting ready for summer reading. I know Tina as well with the youth are on high gear getting all the, the prizes ready and the challenges. And so here's just a reminder and from June 1st to July 31st, we will be, uh, summer reading for grownups starts too. We do have um, that program for, for grownups as well. So put that on your calendar. Uh, it's coming. Good. That's always fun. And I like, the, is that the theme this year? Camp I Read? Yeah. Read Beyond the Beaten Path. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's so cute. Yeah. So, so we'll be having a lot of that. Um, Coming up though, May 3rd, we start out off on Tuesday, um, Eating for Stress Management. Uh, this is our, another program we have with Northwest Medicine, Palos Hospital, um, working with the Fleischmann um, program, their Center for Culinary Health. So they'll be talking about what you can do. Um, you know, eating healthy doesn't have to be boring or time consuming. So we're gonna um, focus on the stuff that is good for us. So, and, and good, tasty mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. It's always good to get some new ideas too. What you know for stress or just new ideas for things to cook and make and prepare. It's good. Yeah. Okay, and then we've got Chicago and the German U five hundred five U five hundred five submarine. That's a that's a mouthful. Coming up on <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> May fifth at six thirty. We have um, for those of you folks who've been to the Science and Industry Museum down downtown Chicago, and you've seen the the, the uh, submarine um, inside the building. Uh, this is a photograph of it, of course, as they bought it to the museum. Um, I do wonder how they got it inside. And maybe we'll learn about that at this one. So this was the last remaining German U-505 submarine. Um, and this is a program that tells you how Chicago got it um, and you know the story behind it. So looking forward to hearing all about that. We've got the historian from um, Cantini who's going to be here with us. That's fantastic. And, you know, hearing the behind stories make when you go look at it for real more interesting, because otherwise you don't really know how to get here. What's the history behind it? And it's that's really valuable to know. Makes it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Our next uh, class is uh, coming up on uh, Monday, May 9th at 2 p.m. Uh, LinkedIn Basics. So this, again, is a virtual class, folks. So you do need to sign up for that. So and it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, Learn about LinkedIn. Very good. And then Tuesday, May 10th at 6.30, we have a, an interesting program with author Sylvia Foti. Um, she wrote a book called The Nazi's Granddaughter. And um, it's how she discovered that her grandfather was a war criminal. And the book is about how um, when she was growing up that she always heard stories about her father's uh, exemplary war record and he, he was a war hero in his country and um, then she her she decided to write a book about him because she thought oh he did so many wonderful things and as she began looking into his past she found out that it was something that was not just happened with her grandfather but many of the people who fought in the war uh, for the Nazis their records were changed to make cleansed and made them to look like heroes when in fact they weren't. So her story is very interesting. And she's going to be talking to us about that on Tuesday, May 10th at 630. Wow, that had to be a shocking revelation uh, yeah. for her. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. So well, it's a very emotional story. We're I look forward to hearing about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have uh, the history of the electric car coming up on Tuesday, May 17th at 630. Um, you know, we think that, you know, Elon Musk invented the, the um, 
the electric car. But in fact, folks, it was started way back in the 1800s, uh, early, late 1800s, of course, early 1900s. And as you can see from some of the photos on the slide. So we're going to learn all about that one. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. He, he's not the father of the electric car. No, he's not. And then um, we're back with our other Illinois Libraries Presents program. This is a um, author visiting program with Michelle Zahner. She is the author of Crying in H Mart, which is one of the uh, New York Times bestseller. I think it's still on this bestseller list right now. And um, so kind of a memoir of her life growing up um, in uh, the Pacific Northwest. And um, I, fin I just finished the book and it's, it's an excellent book. She's also a, a member of the Japanese Breakfast Band and she's going to be having a conversation with author, Chicago's own author, uh, Jennifer Hopper on Wednesday, May 18th at 7 p.m. This is a collaborative program that we um, joined with um, several other libraries across the state of Illinois to bring this um, program to you. Very good, very nice. Always good to hear an author. Yes. And then we have coming up on Thursday, May 19th, how to create posters, presentations, cards, and more. And if any of you folks have um, ever used Canva, um, it's a free online product to create beautiful and eye-catching posters and cards and presentations. Uh, Michelle, who is our uh, one of our newer staff members here, is the expert on it. And she can tell you how to do some wonderful things, show you how to do some wonderful things too. She does incredible things with it. So this will be a great class to take if you guys want to, if you're learning, want to learn anything about this resource. So please join us for that. You know, that is good to know because you know out there are a lot of resources that you don't know what they are, how to look them up. Um, and this gives you, you know, an opportunity to, to do that because you know, sometimes I look at my computer and think, well, I wish I knew where I could go to look for yeah. cards, presentations. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's great. Yeah. And she'll even show you how to do videos on here. It's, it's really amazing. So um, uh, stay tuned for that one. Okay. Another tech program we have expand your expand your tech skills with Niche Academy on Monday, May 23rd at 2 p.m. Niche Academy is one of our newest products that we have at the library for patrons uh, and staff. Actually, it's you um, you can view training tutorials uh, through them. Um, how to use our the library's resources, but you can also learn other things like. Um, about Google Docs or uh, researching um, your genealogy that kind of stuff. So you, all you have to do is visit our website at phlibrary.org to uh, view some of these things from Niche Academy, but, but also attend this class and Matt's gonna show us, show you all about it too. Okay, great. And on, um, nope, this is our youth program. One more, uh, before we get to Tina, um, we just booked another one on for May 12th. I don't have a slide on it now because I'm still talking with the um, film director, um, but. It's on our calendar, so visit phlibrary.org, and it's going to be, um, we're gonna show a film by an Emmy-nominated um, film director and maker by Tom Desch, who's um, going to, he's created a film called um, I'm Holding Pattern. And it's about the 30-year battle to get an airport in Piatel. I mean, I know Sue, we know this, we've heard about this from way back when um, this thing, the first thing started, but he does, this film shows an incredible history of this whole issue, how it started, what are the different um, issues involved in it, um, coming from based, uh, coming from the, the residents who live in that area and coming from the political groups who are hoping and what it will do for their communities if they were to get an airport. An airport in a community is the number one job provider for decades, okay? So it is a high ticket, highly priced item and anybody who gets it in their community gets so many benefits out of it. So the movie shows the, the, the balance on this or the battle or the, the back and forth that's going on between the residents and of, of both different communities. And he does a wonderful job of showing both arguments um, very well. Um, so you leave the movie scratching your head thinking, I don't know what to do here, you know, but it's a very poignant film. He's, he did our film last March um, when we did the, um, he did the film on the, um, uh, what is it? Ah, oh, I forget his name. Oh, 
whatever. But it was about the, the historical home in Kankakee. Um, and it was an incredible film. And we had a, a great time and learned a lot. So join us. All of this talk for joining us for a May 12th Thursday program at 6.30 with Tom Desch. And we're going to be showing a film called Holding Pattern. And is that then still virtual? Yes, that is a virtual. So we'll be watching that virtually. Yes. So you can <laughs> tune in wherever you are to watch it. Okay. Well, that's good. And yes, that has been, I mean, I've worked with people who are very, very strong opinions about that airport and have worked feverishly at, you know, their particular viewpoint on that airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For years. Yeah. So that's it for us. Uh, I will we'll turn it over to Tina. Okay. Sounds good. Hi, Tina. And Hi. Uh, we're going to hear all about what's happening for our youth department and teens. And, um, you know, I know you have a little bit of a challenge because you don't have the usual um, areas to uh, have, uh, you know, your workspace, but you still have all the great programs and they're still all virtual anyway. So that seems to be able to work out pretty well. Yes, and we're just constant, we're reminding our patrons that when we do open up upstairs, it's going to be a nice, beautiful place that they're going to want to come to every day just because it's going to be so neat with all the different things that we're going to have. It really is it's going to be tremendous. Mm -hmm. And uh, kicking off May is a Mother's Day program. So this is a craft. You come to the library, we give you all the supplies to go ahead and decorate a Mother's Day dish. And this program is on Thursday, May 5th at four o'clock for children grades four through 12. And again, come to the library, this dish, you don't need to spend any money on it. And your mom is going to want to use it for candy. She's going to want to use it for her jewelry. So lots of purposes with this dish. And she's going to be very happy because you made it. It's always so special then. Mm -hmm. And on Monday, May 9th, we have a Spanish and English bilingual story time. Uh, at four o'clock for children grades, kindergarten through third grade. Again, this is a virtual program. So if you go ahead and you watch our YouTube channel, you might wanna watch it over and over again in case you missed any phrases or things. Um, and yeah, it you can learn some Spanish while you're at it too, so. That's great, um, extra yes. Great program for like parents and kids to watch together. Great. Okay, and it's that time of year again, finals are approaching and just around the corner. So we have our regular stress busters program that we usually have in May. It's gonna be from May 9th through the 13th for uh, students in grades six through 12th grade who are preparing for finals. So what stress busters is, is you come to the library and we give you a bag full of goodies, everything that you're gonna need to help you study and ace your test. And you're going to get highlighter, index cards, some snacks, some pens, and it, we're going to help prepare you to study as much as we can. Oh, isn't that nice? It's a little care package for all those kids studying. Yeah. And then they can study in the reading room with us. Oh, they can. Okay. That's great. And on Wednesday, May 11th, we will be sculpting tiny clay pots for little succulents. And this is going to be a program for children in grades third through fifth grade. So yes, if you have, if you'd like to sculpt or if you've never sculpted before, please get the supplies at the library for this program and follow along on our YouTube video. Nice, sculpting is fun. Mm -hmm. And on Thursday, May 12th, uh, we have a crab craft at four o'clock and Children uh, in grades kindergarten through third grade are going to follow along on a video to go ahead and make their own unique crab craft. And this is also going to help them get ready for summer as well. Very good. Mm -hmm. And also the same day, we have ice cream keychains. Uh, for children to come to the library and go ahead and get the supplies to make their own ice cream keychain at home. This is for children grades four through eighth grade. And again, we provide all the supplies and you get to make your home, key, your house keys look a little bit fancier. They are hanging on your backpack. That's a fun thing to do too. <laughs> 
And on Thursday, well, I'm sorry, on Tuesday, May 17th at six o'clock or on Saturday, May 21st at two o'clock, we have a volunteer orientation. Now we have been getting quite a few students asking about service hours and what they can do for the library to get some service hours. So if you register for one of these orientations, we will give you all of the details, let you know what we're gonna ask you to do when you volunteer at the library and let you know some of our expectations. And you can also ask us any questions that you like as well. So again, please, please, please do not leave those service hours that you need to get to the very end because a lot of other students are gonna be doing the same thing and we're not gonna be having all the hours that we usually have in the summer. And you know, you just brought up an excellent point. I know kids sometimes procrastinate a little bit about getting those service hours and there's no time like the present to get them. And you'll find for most people, the volunteering is fun and you'll really enjoy it. You may even want to put in some extra hours. Exactly. And you know, if you start right now, even a little bit, two or three hours right now will help you in the long run. So mm -hmm. that you're not scrambling. Totally. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, May 18th at 10 o'clock, we have a space story time for our young patrons ages two to five years old. So they're gonna sing stories. I mean, I'm sorry, sing songs maybe sing stories too, <laughs> sing songs and hear stories all about space. Good. And on Thursday, May 19th, we have our fairy tale garden terrariums at four o'clock for children grades six through 12th grade. Again, these unique little fairy gardens, we have all the supplies here at the library, they just came in and I'm very excited for this program because you get to make your own terrarium with like little fairy houses and things and it just decorate it any way that you want. Adorable. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we will have some sun soon so that <laughs> kids can decorate and put up sun catchers. Uh, this program is gonna be on Tuesday, May 24th at four o'clock. Uh, for children grades kindergarten through third grade. And again, use some basic supplies and just decorate your home and put up a sun catcher in the window. The sun will come out. I could burst into song tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> And on Friday, May 26th, we have bubble wrap beehive painting. Say that 10 times fast <laughs> at four o'clock for grades kindergarten through third grade. So this is a great program, different textures for kids to use and create a work of art in the process. So definitely this program is one to watch. And also you don't even have to go out and buy bubble wrap supplies. We have it for you. Oh, great. That's really cute. And as Janine mentioned earlier, we do have our summer reading program. The theme is Read Beyond the Beaten Path, and it runs from June 1st to July 30th. And children and adults can go ahead and register online through our Beanstack account. We will have more information on our summer reading program as the date approaches, but definitely, definitely put this on your calendar. Get ready, right. Mm -hmm. And that should be all that we have. Okay, sounds fantastic. There's so many great things to take advantage of and get started. And summer reading is always lots of fun too. So I know that is something to register for anytime, sooner than later. Uh, great, okay, well, we are uh, grateful that you were here today with us and we look forward to spending some more time at the library. And yeah, we, we're counting the days till that youth and teen area is back open again. I think uh, all the patrons will be really pleased with how that is. And adults who don't have uh, youth or teens in their house, they should go upstairs and take a look at it when it's all done because it's gonna be super, super special. Good. All right, well, this concludes uh, at the library for this month. Thanks for watching us. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Tina. And we'll see you next time at the library. Thanks for bye -bye. having us, Sue. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.